We got a two-barrel Unitank from More Beer Pro's line of Unitanks, and uh, we're gonna unbox it for you and show you how it works. Woohoo! Let's cut this body open. Cut, uh, cut, cut, cut! Uh, cut. Logan's gonna Hulk smash some wood. So that's the general unboxing. Uh, before we get into the why we bought this and all that stuff, let's roll some sexy B-roll looking stuff. So we went ahead and grabbed the More Beer Pro Conical Two Barrel Fermenter, and I think it's gonna work pretty dang good in our brew house. Let me tell you all the features of this guy, and then also tell you why it works really well at the price point that it's at. First of all, we're pretty sure that this thing can be used as a unit tank as well. Its pressure relief valve on the back here actually comes, uh, sets to 15 PSI, although the tank is obviously rated to much higher. Uh, this thing came in with everything, the neoprene jacket, and the reaction cooling rod at around $2,500. Um, so that is a big expense, but at the same time, we already spent about $1,300 on our SS Brutech one barrel fermenters. And so if we can do two barrels for less than twice the price, and these things come with some extra utility, I think it's worth going for. Uh, why this thing can be used as a unitank, first of all, is not only is it well pressure rated, but it has a really phenomenal uh, diffusion stone on the side here. Uh, obviously everything's tri-clamp in this, which means it's easy to take apart and clean, uh, but that diffusion stone there is gonna make it so that we can crash in this, as well as carbonate, which is really cool. That means that we can go from primary fermentation through a dump cycle into our conditioning phase, and then we can also crash and carbonate this and have this ready to either serve off of or be keg or keg off of. So with a tank like this, I can do a couple of really cool things, including spunding or pressure fermenting, uh, which is a really good way to save money on CO2, especially when you're doing batches of beer this size. Spunding or naturally carbonating in the same vessel saves you having to spend a lot of CO2 on conditioning this or getting it carbonated towards the end. So this thing, like I said, is pressure rated to 15 PSI, meaning when primary fermentation is nearing completion, I can go ahead and take uh, where the blow off tube would be on the side here and I can shut that valve and then either attach a spunding valve right there or I can just leave it closed and estimate where the pressure is going to be based on the pressure gauge right here. Um, I can also, um, instead of using a pressure gauge right here, I can also go ahead and start with a spunding valve right here and keep everything closed. Um, I can do the same thing with a pressure gauge on the end here and a spunding valve here and have the entire thing fermented under pressure. So. There's a lot of utility that goes with a fun tank like this. Now, on the side over here, we actually have a high quality sample port. Uh, and with that specific sample port, we actually also have a Zwickel valve we can attach to that. So when this guy is cold and carbonated, we can attach our Zwickel and actually get uh, carbonated uh, and properly conditioned samples right into our glass to really see how it's tasting and if we need to do anything to the beer, which is really fun. Of course, the biggest part of a conical like this is actually utilizing the dump valve. The dump valve on the bottom comes 1.5 inch TC. Uh, the one thing that I would say could be better about this is I do think that 2 inch TC does a lot better job of not getting those big uh, sludge poops basically coming off from, uh, from, from transferring so our dumps might not be as clean or consistent as if we had a 2 inch port on the bottom. But that said, still that's the purpose of a conical is to be able to do those kind of dumps which will make it really easy to do everything in one tank with this system. And if we pressure ferment the entire thing or we spun the entire thing, then we should have no problem clearing out the bottom dump valve because the entire tank will be under pressure. The reaction cooling rod is a pretty simple apparatus. Basically what it has is two different ports. One is the going in port where it goes down into one of the rods. Uh, and then there's basically looped from rod to rod all the way around the reaction chilling mechanism and then back into the return loop, back into the glycol chiller, and we'll chill back down. How that will work is we'll basically just set this up um, so that our pumps in our glycol chiller will activate anytime that this is over temperature and chill this down to whatever temperature we need. We do not have this set up for heat, however, that wouldn't be terribly difficult to do with a couple of, uh, we actually use firm wraps even on the one barrel scale. And since this is not jacketed on the outside, uh, we should be able to put those firm wraps right under the neoprene jacket that comes over this. So all in all for $2,500, I think this is actually kind of a steal. I think it's a really great buy, uh, especially considering all the add-ons that come to make this as close to a professional quality tank at the two barrel size as you can possibly get. Um, by that, I mean a quality diffusion stone. 
I have bought seven barrel tanks that do not have a diffusion stone this good, which makes this really, really good for a proper unitanking, basically. Uh, even though it's not gonna call itself a unitank, this should work for all intents and purposes as a unitank. Uh, bottom line, this thing, for the $2,500 price point, has everything that you would see on the larger commercial scale. And I've seen a lot of the uh, tanks come in that are even the seven, 10 barrel size that don't have some of the accessories on it that are as high quality as the accessories here. Again, the one kind of weird thing is it's not jacketed, but it does have a nice cooling mechanism on the top. So you can use this as a tank by itself, or you can use it as a unit tank with the cooling mechanism that goes in it. I think the tank by itself runs like 2200, somewhere in that range but I think it's way, way worth it to put the reaction chilling rod and get the neoprene jacket to make this insulated because that will uh, make this thing operate basically as a unitank. And for $2,500, a high quality unitank with all these accessories being as high quality as they are, I think is a super cool product for the price point. So that's pretty much it for the breakdown of all the utility that comes with this tank. Uh, pretty much all we have left to do is go ahead and get it cleaned and passivated and ready to use. One thing I am realizing while filling this up with caustic so I can get this all cleaned and ready to go is that you will not be able to CIP with the reaction chilling rod in that thing. So the chilling rod is going to have to be cleaned by hand pretty much every single time which is a net negative compared to a jacket but at the same time it's really not that big of a deal um, and for the price again should still be pretty functional. All right, now this is uh, filled enough with caustic. It's about, I don't know, a third full, enough that I can definitely get some out of the sample ports to make sure that those are nice and clean on the inside. I've got to take the cooling rod back out so that I can hand wash that while I put the CIP stuff in there. So now we do the standard. I think this is a uh, three inch to 1.5, uh, or it might be four inch to 1.5, something like that on top. Then we throw our CIP thing right next to that. Then grab your super size pump. For me, this is gonna be the uh, Chugger Max had this for a few years it works like a beaut so as you can see we just got beer into this guy and we did make a couple of modifications to it to make sure that we got all the utility off of it we wanted um, right now where the blow off normally went we went ahead and threw a T on there so we can have the blow off with the relief valve and a spunding valve all in the same spot uh, what that's going to allow us to do is go from blow off to pressure fermentation uh, the other thing that we did is we went ahead and upgraded the uh, the sample valve to a sample valve that I like a little better. And then we use the old sample valve actually to go right into the carbonation stone. Um, so right now we've got to hook up to oxygen just to oxygenate that beer we just got in there. Uh, but we will be also using that to carbonate the beer after we get this whole thing crashed. Um, like we've said before, we do have the reaction chilling uh, bars that are going right down the middle. Um, so that did take the place of the original three inch, uh, three inch to 1.5 lid that comes with it. Um, the three inch to 1.5 lid you could also be using for something like a spunding valve if that was still on there. But having the reaction chilling coil allows us to use this basically as a unit tank and actually crash in this when we're done fermenting. Uh, other than that, things that you cannot see, uh, there is a thermal well port on the backside as well as the thermometer that we got right here. Uh, and then if you go all the way down, we'll show you one more cool thing on this guy. All of um, the larger scale professional tanks will come with legs that actually make them so that you can uh, balance them out. So you can ra uh, raise and lower each individual leg to make sure that even if your ground is a little bit unsteady, you've got this guy on an even footing and it's gonna be stable and stay there. The racking arm that we've got uh, right here is very common on larger scale commercial tanks. What it does is it has an arm that is adjustable basically where the handle on the backside is pointed that's where the sample uh, arm on the inside is pointed. And so we can use that to adjust between having the arm facing up and the arm facing down. So we can maximize the amount of yield that we get off this tank without having to worry about drawing into, uh, drawing into kegs when we're kegging off of this, this thing. So we can rotate the racking arm so that we don't have to get to the bad stuff um, that we don't want off of there, but also get a full yield uh, when we do that, basically what we'll do is we'll just put a sight glass right on here so we can see what's coming out of it, if it's looking clean or if it's looking like yeast and yuckies. On the back side, we took out the PRV and actually replaced that with another butterfly valve. Uh, we can use the spunning valve as a PRV as long as we adjust that low enough, so that'll be fine. And by having the back be a butterfly valve, we can actually open this up and make any additions we need to make during fermentation if we need to add in something. Uh, let's say it's a brute IPA and we want to add in some enzyme or it's a high alcohol beer and we need to add some nutrient. Uh, or even just open it up to dry hop. All right, so that is the review of this super sexy beast. The thing that we're loving about this and the reason we got it is that it's gonna help us make fantastic IPAs with minimizing any sort of risk. Um, so this is pretty much gonna be an IPA tank for us. Uh, what it does is makes it so since we can unitank, we don't have to worry about transferring and there is zero time that this thing can pick up oxygen. Completely closed system. 
ferment, crash, carbonate, and keg off of the same vessel. If you like this and want to see more big scale stuff review, or sort of big scale stuff, it's only two barrels, but if you want to see more of this, let us know in the comments below. Like this, if this gets up to, uh, if this gets up to 300 likes, then we'll totally buy another one and review that one too. Buy Peter a better mask. Buy me a better mask, this one doesn't fit. Uh, ship it to the address that's also posted below. Um, vertical aspect ratio, upside down aspect ratio, totally sweet camera flip trick. <laughs> the camera did a kickflip. Ah. <laughs>